I don't want to overstate this whole issue with intestinal tract function and its impact on your body, but I don't think you can. I think the studies that have come in in the last year have been so compelling and so overwhelmingly positive and so simple, so non-toxic, um, that we have to talk about making your intestinal tract better. I might act a little like a news reporter and glance down at my document here from the New England Journal of Medicine Review uh, so I can just refresh my memory on some fine points, but what you need to know is that your intestinal tract has a lot of bacteria, five pounds of good or bad bacteria. If it's good, good for you. If it's bad, it's really bad. You have 13 trillion human cells. You have 130 trillion average bacterial cells and other cells which create what's called a microbiome. So your body has all sorts of genetics, right? It has genes. 10 times that, the bacteria have genes. They mingle. Your body's genes and the bacterial genes, they communicate with one another. They don't necessarily, be, you don't become a bacteria. The gene, genes don't get integrated into your genetic network necessarily. Sometimes they do, but that's unusual. But that communication, that relationship is unbelievable. So unbelievable that if a lean person and an obese person have both the same um, relationship with their, their antibiotic and probiotic situation in their intestinal tract, and you get the, the microbiome, get some of the stool and the bugs from the heavy person and put it in a mouse, the mouse will get fat. If you put that lean person's stool specimen and probiotics into a mouse, it'll get skinny. If someone has a heart attack profile and has a heart attack and you put that stool and those probiotic loads from that heart attack person, the mouse will have a heart attack. No heart attack, obesity, depression. They're related. It's almost unbelievable how powerful this theory is and how far it can be extended. They've actually gotten specific, it's called a fusobacterium and they've implanted fusobacterium in mice from two different classes of people with different disease states. And if you implant those bacteria into animals' intestinal tracts, they mimic that disease condition because of the intestinal tract. So if you're able to get your stool evaluated and then get on a very detailed, specific program for probiotic therapy, you'll do yourself a gigantic service. It's really, really hard to guess what you need, but with that test, which is not an expensive test, you can be very, very specific. But if that test is not available to you, definitely avail yourself of probiotic therapy. There's lots of good products. You wanna take somewhere between 4 billion and 150 billion units a day. Usually it's good to get medical advice on that because there's some conditions that you just don't wanna throw probiotics at it without using some knowledge. So if you're sick, you have to get with your doctor about it. If you're not a sick person, you don't have any problems, you can take probiotics pretty safely. Um, I always recommend getting with a doctor about it though because the benefits are gigantic and you can make a gigantic difference in your health. This is the New England Journal of Medicine. This is not um, some kind of crazy herbal organic magazine. This is a highly respected conventional medicine journal. And everyone's coming around to the fact that good bugs makes a good you. So probiotics are a matter of life and death. Get with your doctor about it. We're better together.